<clears throat> okay, what I like to do is show you guys how to uh, solve a logarithmic equation that looks something like this. So, whoo, man. Um, we got a lot of issues with this one. And the first thing I want you to try to think of, remember when, you, remember when you're solving for equations and you had x plus x like equal, I don't know, eight? Well, you can't, remember our whole goal of solving equations is to get the x equals, right? So you couldn't do anything unless you combined your x's. Then you could divide by two and you got x equals four. Well, logarithms, it's the same thing. We can't use any of our like log property or anything special unless we only have one logarithm, right? Or if our equation's in logarithmic form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to combine these. Now, combining variables had its own rule. If you have an x plus an x, it's two x. However, combining logarithms have its own rules as well, and that's the properties of logs. And what it states is, if I have a logarithm, subtracting another logarithm, and they have the same base, I can combine them by division. Now, remember, this 2 I can rewrite as an exponent. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to write log base 2 of x squared minus log base 2 of x plus 3 equals 2. All right, that's another property of logs that you can take your multiplier and put it back as a function. So now I'll rewrite this as log base 2 of x squared. I'm sorry. Let's change this around a little bit as x squared all over x plus 3. So now I'm taking the function of both of these combined divided equals 2. All right. Now, um, we need to remember a couple rules. First rule is an inverse property. And what the inverse property states is, remember what a logarithm means, guys? If I say logarithm of 3 to 9, that means 3 raised to what number gives you 9? And we know the answer is 2. So if I say log of 3 raised to the third power, 3 raised to what number gives you 3? Well, the answer is 1. So if I said log base 3 of 3 is equal to x, that answer is going to equal x. Well, why does it equal x? Well, remember, I can take that number, I can take my exponent and put it in front as I, as I showed you here. So I could really rewrite this as x log base 3 of 3 equals, well, log base 3 of 3 is 1. 1 times x is 1. I'm sorry, x. Okay? So this works the exact same way. So that way, hopefully, it's easy to understand. It works the same way if I was going to say 3 raised to the log base 3 of x. Okay? So you could say this is going to still... Cancel out to equal x. These two cancel out just like they cancel out there. Okay? So what I want to do is I need to get rid of this logarithm. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could just rewrite it in logarithmic form, um, or I'm sorry, in exponential form, which 2 raised to the second power equals x squared divided by x plus 3. Or what we could do is we could also raise, or I'm sorry, exponentiate each side to the base 2. Therefore, those two would cancel out, and I'd be left with x squared over x plus 3 equals 2 squared. Now, if that just really confused you, um, just think of this this way. Just put it into exponential form. 2 raised to the second power equals this. Okay, It's the same thing. Um, 2 squared, I'm going to rewrite as 4 because I'm kind of running out of space. So now what we have, that's a horrible 2. So now what we have is we have an x squared divided by x plus 3 equals 4. Well, I need to get rid remember, we've got to get rid of this x, right? And one thing I noticed is since I have an x squared, I'm going to have to do some kind of factoring, square rooting, completing the square, or quadratic formula. I mean, that's, something's going to be going on like that. Um, and since I see this other x, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a factoring or a uh, quadratic formula problem. So, or complete the square. So what I need to do to get this off, I need to multiply by x plus 3 on both sides. Therefore, those will cancel out, and I'm left with x squared equals 4 times x. Let's write that a little bit better. 4 times x, as I do distributive property, plus 12. Then, I, let's get them all to the same side by subtract. So at x squared, uh, let me show you. So now, let me explain why I'm having this. So I have x squared equals 4x plus a 12. Remember, when solving for x, you always want to get your x's all the way to the same side, right? 
Now, when you have a quadratic, or anytime you have your axes raised to a different power, we want to see if we can set them as into linear factors. Because what I can do is I can use the zero product property rule, which states that any two numbers multiply to give you zero, one of those numbers has to be zero. So we can use that to find our factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a 4x on both sides. Then I'm going to subtract a 12 on both sides. So therefore, I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals zero. And then I say, can I factor this any further? And you say, yes. Um, the two factors for this would be x minus 6. So the two numbers that multiply to give you negative 12, but add to give you a negative 4. So x minus 6 and x plus 2 equals zero. So since these two numbers, or these two factors, multiply to give me zero, I can set them both equal to zero. And say that x is equal to 6, or x is equal to, yeah, I'm sorry, x is equal to 6, or x is equal to a negative 2. Now those are my two possible solutions. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them back into my logarithm and see if they both work. So I plug 6. So if I take log base of 6, that's going to work. Um, however, if I take log base of 6 plus 3, that's going to give me 9. That one does not work. Um, then I go ahead and take a look at this problem, and I say x equals a negative 2. Well, if I plug in x equals negative 2 in for there, and for this function, I can't evaluate x equals uh, a negative 2. So therefore, that one is not going to work because you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. Okay, so therefore that will not um, work. And but if I put a negative two for there, it would work. But anyways, that is an extraneous solution, does not work. So x equals six is your only solution.